This is the first lecture for section 1.6 on minimum spanning trees. In this lecture, we'll talk about Kruskal's algorithm. So we're going to be talking about a different kind of problem in this section. So as an example, let's imagine that a cable company wants to set up a small network in the local area. So we've got five towns, Shippensburg, Carlisle, Harrisburg, Hagerstown, and York. And we have costs here. So we have a labeled graph. The graph has numbers uh, on the edges. We've seen that before. And in this case, the labels show the cost of connecting each pair of cities. Notice that not every pair of cities is connected. Maybe that could be because there's mountains in the way or there's just not a, an efficient way to get directly from each city to each other city. So it's not a complete graph like we may have seen before for our Hamiltonian circuit problems. So what we want to do, though, is realize that we don't need to build all of these connections, right? All we need to do is make sure that every city is connected through a network to every other city. So we don't have to build all of these connections that we're seeing here. And so the question is, which connections do we need to build? So for example, if I just build these ones that I've colored in in red, in other words, if I don't build the dashed lines, then what we can see here is that we can still get from every city to every other city. So for example, if I wanted to get from Carlisle to Harrisburg, I don't have this direct connection. I didn't build that connection, but I can go from Carlisle directly to Hagerstown, and then from Hagerstown to York, and then from York up to Harrisburg. So that might be inefficient, but it's a way for me to get from each town to every other town. So the idea is, what are the minimum number of connections that I actually have to build so that I can get from everywhere to everywhere else, even if the actual getting there is a little bit inefficient. So one thing we might notice about this potential solution that we had is that if we focus in on these three towns, Shippensburg, Hagerstown, and York, if we build all three of those connections, then it's kind of unnecessary, right? So we've built all of the direct connections between each of the three towns, but I could omit any one of those. And specifically, I would want to omit this expensive one between Shippensburg and York. And even if I cross that one out and don't build this connection, I can still get from Shippensburg to York. I just have to go through Hagerstown. I can go from Shippensburg down to Hagerstown and Hagerstown over to York. So again, the idea here is what are the minimum connections that I need to build so that I can still get from anywhere to anywhere else? And in fact, if I ever had a circuit in my network, remember a circuit means I've got a loop here. So if I ever have a circuit in my network, I can actually eliminate any one of those edges and still get from everywhere to everywhere else. So for example, I could omit this edge here. And again, even though it might look inefficient, I can still get from this edge all the way around, right? I have to walk a little bit, but I can get all the way around to the other edge. So it's still connected. However, if I eliminate two edges out of my circuit, well, now my graph has become disconnected. Now there's a break where I can get between these three vertices and I can get between these five vertices, but I can't get from one side to the other. Right, so I've, if I get rid of too many edges, then I don't have a connected graph. So this is the problem. What we're looking for is called the minimum spanning tree. So let me break those three words down for you. So minimum hopefully makes sense. It's the lowest total cost. Spanning is this idea of being able to get from any vertex to any other vertex. So it's spanning when everything's all connected to the network. And then tree is a, a technical term here that just means no circuits, right? So again, what we hopefully noticed is that if we ever had a circuit, then that's at least one, uh, one edge too many. We can eliminate one of those edges from that circuit and still have everything be connected. So the way we're going to do this is called Kruskal's algorithm. So again, we're going to be finding an algorithm here. We're not going to want to try to do this with a brute force method where we consider every possible collection of edges. That would take way too long. So this algorithm is named for Joseph Kruskal, who's an American mathematician, and it is another heuristic algorithm. The idea is, well, let's use those cheap edges before we use the expensive ones. Let's use the lower cost edges before we use any expensive edges. And the nice thing about this algorithm is, unlike the algorithms that we've talked about before, this one is actually guaranteed to find that minimum spanning tree. So this algorithm, which as you're going to see is pretty easy to use, is guaranteed to find the best answer. So that's pretty nice. So here's how it works. Step one is we start with none of the edges being part of the solution. And then we add edges one at a time, starting with that cheapest edge, but we don't add an edge if adding it would create a circuit, right? Because we know we don't need circuits, so we skip over that edge if adding it would create a circuit. And we keep doing that until every vertex is connected to our network. Okay, so let's see this in action. So we've got our original graph, so none of the edges are connected to my network. 
and I'm going to start adding them one at a time. So I look through my graph and I find the cheapest edge and I add that edge first. And the cheapest edge is here from Carlisle to Harrisburg. So that's the first edge in my graph. What's the next cheapest edge? The next one is 1.2 from Shippensburg to Hagerstown. That's the next lowest number. And adding that edge did not create a circuit, so I keep that. The next lowest number is the 2.2 from Carlisle to York. So I add that edge because adding that edge would not create a circuit. I'm not done because my graph is not fully connected. I still can't get, for example, from Carlisle to Shippensburg because I don't have any way to cross that gap. There's no way to get from that city to that other city. All right, what's my next lowest edge? My next lowest edge is this 2.3 from Harrisburg, New York, but I don't need that edge because I can already get from Harrisburg, New York by going through Carlisle. Or another way to think about it is if I added that 2.3 edge, that would create a circuit connecting the three towns Harrisburg, Carlisle, and York. So I skip over that edge. I don't add that edge because it would create a circuit. The next lowest edge is 2.9 from Shippensburg to Carlisle. So I add that edge because I wouldn't create a circuit there. And now I'm actually done because I've created a, a network that connects every city to every other city, even if I have to walk through other cities to get there. So notice that this 3.0, 4.7, 4.1, I never considered those edges because I finished my problem before I even got to that point. So there's another way to think about Kruskal's algorithm. If you've seen this algorithm before or in another context, you might have seen it this way, which is basically just the opposite. We start with all of the edges being part of our solution. And instead of starting to add the lowest cost edge, we start by deleting the most expensive edges. So we delete edges one at a time, starting with that most expensive edge, but we don't delete an edge if it would break the graph into two disconnected pieces. And we keep deleting edges until you can't delete any more. And this alternate version, right, it's a different way to think about it, uh, but it's just kind of like the, the reverse. It's the exact opposite of what we were doing with our Kruskal's algorithm. So this alternate Kruskal's algorithm actually also gives the exact same solution. So next time we're going to look through some more examples using Kruskal's algorithm, and we're going to talk about other ways to think about how we can minimize the cost of a network, other sort of real-world considerations that might play into this kind of problem. Yeah.